Uh, very good evening out there. Welcome to another live broadcast. This is the Potter's Gate online broadcast. I'm sure you can hear me loud and clear. Well, tonight has been a bit of tug of war just to start this broadcast tonight. So many things has happened and transpired just to stop this broadcast. Anyhow, I believe tonight that we will have a wonderful time in the presence of God. Well, I believe that your fast went well today. Mine went well, uh, even though it's been a busy day for me. So many things I'm trying to do here just to, you know, make the place a bit, you know, uh, more convenient for me and of course to be able to do what I need to do effectively. So we are going to take time to pray tonight and of course believe God to grant us once again inroad into his divine intention and purposes. Uh, by the way, I've been trying to connect to Facebook or right, for those who are following us on Facebook to be able to con connect with us. I've not been able to do that. So please, if you can share this on Facebook, if you're listening and you're able to share this, it will uh, uh, really uh, uh, help at least for others to be able to, you know, connect with us. Uh, yes, I've been trying to do that, but I've not been able to do that. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm not going to be distracted by that. I guess those are just uh, a kind of a distraction. Tonight, uh, like I said, we are going to pray and we are going to believe God to once again help us to proceed further. Uh, uh, in the morning, I try to give us a kind of a perspective to this uh, fast that we're doing. There are several areas that we're going to be looking into. But uh, I remember this morning, I, I, I spoke about the concept of presenting ourselves unto God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. The, the, script, the, the scripture in the book of Hebrews, excuse me, in the book of Romans chapter 12, we started by looking at Romans chapter 12. And I'm going to read that again. It says, therefore, I, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And I felt that was, you know, an interesting scripture in looking at the whole concept of, you know, fasting, that fasting is first presenting our bodies unto God as, as a living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice. We want God to, to use our body, to use our faculty, to use every aspect of our life, amen, to honor him, to glorify his name. So I thought this is a beautiful place to start with because, of course, we, we, we want to engage God. We want to engage his presence. We want to, amen, be that vessel that God can use to glorify you know his holy name in whatever area that he will you know he will allow us but the first thing we want to do like we all know all right that God will not use an unwilling vessel an unprepared vessel God will not you know use a vessel that is impure so we want to you know present our life to God in that sense of pureness in that sense of holiness so the scripture says that we are you know, should present our bodies. And I love the word, amen, that, that captures this concept of presentation. You know, Paul used the word body. In other words, every part of your life, every part of your, of your being, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, that you present, amen, your entire being unto God as a living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice, they said, holy and acceptable, for it is our reasonable service. I believe this, this, this kind of life or presentation will allow us to enter into that arena or into that sphere where we are able to, you know, uh, 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 hear what God, Amen, has in stock for us. We are able to comply with heaven's desire and demand. One thing about fasting is that it leads us into that arena where we are able to not just hear what God is doing, but we're also able to see, amen, and, and we know the demand of God, we know the requirement of God, amen, for our life, particularly within the context of God's prophetic mandate. 
I think that's something that I, w- I would like to highlight, but you know, as we move further, as we proceed further onto that, you know, day in God, on t- as we go further to honor God, to live for Him, to you know, uh, uh, you know, li- to yes, to, to to live for Him. We want every aspect of our life, Amen, to comply with Amen the demand of God. And I'm saying this in the context of. You know, living in a day where there is so much hostility to, you know, to the standards of God, living in a time where it is, thank you so much, my dear sister Nkumisa, thank you for joining. Uh, at least I know somebody is connected. It's been a tug of war, all right, just to connect, you know, this evening. But I thank God that uh, we're doing this. So thank you for connecting. I hope uh, uh, you you had a blessed day today. Well, I, I, I'm just sharing from the point that, you know, we left this morning that you know we want to be able to present our life our body amen unto god romans chapter 12 all right began by saying he said i urge you brothers and sisters in the view of god's mercy that you offer your body as a living sacrifice of course that's what we're doing we're offering our bodies to god amen thank you so much yeah We're offering our bodies unto God as a living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice. That that word, amen, sacrifice, you know, to me, speaks into the 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 demand, amen, to buffet the body, the demand to, you know, to 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 you know to to abstain ourselves from things or that we would normally indulge. All right. It says that we present ourselves unto God as a living, not as a dead sacrifice, but as a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice, all right, is a difficult thing to do without the grace of God, without the mercy of God, without the spirit of God, you know, leading and guiding us. Okay. It's easy to present something that is dead. But something that is alive, meaning that that thing has got a will, that thing has got his own emotion, has got his own mind. Remember that, you know, Jesus said, Jesus said, I willingly lay down my life. I willingly, he said, no one, no one takes my life from me. No, no one forced me into what I am doing. I willingly presented i willingly you know decided okay to 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 be a to be a sacrificial lamb and i think that is something that we have to consider particularly like i said in the nature of the days that we live in that you know we be, man is man has become more selfish all right the society that we live in the world that we live in today amen is one that is that is built around self all right that is built around what i can gain for myself what i can get for myself all right uh, self preservation all right we, we we live in a day where the worship of self has has taken precedent in society so when paul all right made the statement it was actually you know a, a you know, making this declaration in light of the kind of society, amen, that, you know, the, 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 the early church found themselves, okay, that the, the issues of your body and your mind plays a major role because these are the two things, all right, that was, you know, prominent back in the days, all right, you know, the, 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 the Roman world, amen, they, they pride themselves in knowledge, you know, that, that, that dimension of life within the context of, you know, what they know, you know, flaw philosophy great philosophy new new discovery new adventure new you know uh, 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 um, you know frontier of knowledge that was something that was reigning back in the day beyond just you know the physical strength you know being a gladiator being strong being powerful being able to fight you know and you know just like we have certain things in our day that were wild men and even wild women they they had the same in those days so in the light of that paul was actually con- trusting a different order of life to the people that hey guys you need to live your life amen by presenting your body in, in those days amen the, the the present the presentation of the of the body amen was to something that you know that brings heroism is to something that that you know that 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 is dedicated all right to you know to a goddess or to a god somewhere or to some you know a, a position of fame or power you understand you go to war you come back a conqueror you know and but paul is now saying hey you need if you want if you really want to you know be the best in life you really want to be in that point at that place where things are working out amen in accordance to you know uh, 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 your sense of of fulfillment whatever is going to give you fulfillment and joy paul said you present your body 
as a living sacrifice unto God in a day where, like I said, the body is what men concentrated on. But in fact, in, 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 in those days, when you have some form of defect in your body, you know, you are, you are, you are seen almost as an outcast. You're, you're not accepted. You're not, you know, uh, um, you're not love. In fact, in back in those days, or uh, you know, parents who have you know children who are deformed, they literally throw away their children. They 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 they, they believe that that child is cursed or something. You know, is wrong with that child. So, so they throw away their children. That is how you know you know man you know uh, uh, lived you know his life in the day where they're searching for some kind of perfection. Is in this context that Paul was actually writing. So to get to a point, a place where you present your body to God as a living sacrifice is, is, is something that is, you know, almost like strange because yes, you can present yourself to some spirit, to some God, you know, and all of that. But to present yourself to a God that you don't even know, you are, you don't have a relationship with that, that is like, you know, you know, ridiculous to them, but it's in the light of this truth that Paul was speaking to the church of Rome, that guys Present your body, amen, as a living. Keep it intact. Keep it, amen. You know, you know, a, 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 a flourish. Keep it, you know, a, a, you know, beauty, beautify it, but not unto your own self, amen, but unto God, because we are looking at the the concept of how we can live a life that honor God. Of course, that's the context. How we can live a life that please God. Okay. One thing that fasting does, amen, is that it, it brings us back to the essence, to the real reason why, amen, we, we, we live and why our life, amen, must, you know, glorify God. Fasting awakens our mind again to what matters, amen, not just to God, but even to us. You know, in, we're in the place of fasting, you, 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 you begin to get your priorities right, amen your sense of understanding your sense of you know a uh, 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 purpose and and sensitivity to you know to the demand of god and to life amen Be, you know comes to the fore all right so it's a present yourself you present your body as a living sacrifice holy holy the word holy means complete complete not just one path amen don't just present one path all right don't just present just you know the, the physical aspect of your body but you present amen your mind you present your your thought you present your imagination you present your desire you present your will amen you present your emotion you present your passion whatever it is amen that reflects wholeness you know you present it amen unto god it's a holy and pleasing unto God. It says, for this is your true, amen, and proper worship. People worship all kinds of things and people worship for various reasons. Paul says, amen, the reason why, amen, we worship era is, to, is to bring our body, amen, to that point, to that place where the body, amen, becomes an offering unto God. Hallelujah. Our body becomes an offering. And friends, this is the height of spirituality. That your life is presented to that your mind, your soul, every part of you, every part of your being is presented to God. That is the height, amen, of, of, of true spirituality. Because we can do anything, amen, within our strength and power, amen, that that does not necessarily please God, that does not necessarily honor God, amen. But when you begin to live a life that is focused on glorifying God, on honoring God, amen, and you do that in a sense of wholeness, wholeness, not fractured, not fraction, not some part, amen. You don't give God one part and hold on to one part, that every aspect of your life, amen, is presented to God. It's in this dimension of life, amen, that we begin to talk about, you know, in the, the kingdom reality. You know, the Bible says, seek ye for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is sought when we, re, you know, offer, render our life unto God, amen, as a living sacrifice, because God is not going to use, amen, one, a sacrifice that is not whole that is not complete amen it's not going to use a sacrifice that is that is fractured that is that is you know uh, half hazard in a, in mentality god is not going to use a sacrifice that is not seeking amen to 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 do the bidding of god completely 
So, so th- th- this admonition, uh, to me, I felt is something that we need to, amen, look into, particularly in the context of the days that we live in, amen. Because, you know, the Bible says, in the last day, perilous time shall come. Men shall be lovers of themselves, more than lovers of God. Men shall be lovers of themselves. They, sh- they shall be, you know, boastful, you know. They, they, you know, the kind of things people will be doing, amen, will be to gratify their own desire, their own flesh, their own passion their own longing amen it's it's all gonna be about me myself and i in that order the lord says amen that we need to live our life amen yielding ourselves constantly you know you know projecting and 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 offering ourselves as a living sacrifice unto god Uh, 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 to me i believe that's something that is very 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 laudable something we all need to you know look into all right if you look at what is going on in the world today like i said you know people are becoming more more self-centered more selfish people will give you a thousand and one reason why they cannot fast all right they, yes they will tell you this is the reason why i cannot i just some will tell you well i don't but guess what nobody feels like fasting nobody you know in their normal you know sense will like okay i'm gonna just go on a fast there must be something pushing you there must be a drive amen all right uh, sometimes it's desperacy but it should not be it should be because we want to maintain our sense of spirituality we want to maintain amen our sense of focus we want to maintain our 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 sense of you know of 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 entering that narrow gate that narrow you see if you uh, people you know it is paul you know, paul who said if if you're contesting in in a, in a in a race you want to be in the best shape all right you want to be in the best of shape all right you want to be in the best of shape if you're contesting uh, and he said you do this amen for a perishable price how much more amen the, uh, you know that we contest for amen an imperishable price think about that i mean what has kept me till this day till this point of my journey it's the grace of god amen but that grace you know has come with a great price sometimes you you just have to stick to the to the values and to the principle amen that god uh, you know uh, as 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 declared as you know uh, uh demand f- you know from your life you you just want to maintain that part because it's not an easy thing like i said when you live in an environment where everybody's going going north all right going north and you want to go south oh you understand where everybody's going the wrong way but you want to go the right way you you you, you must develop some sort of amen spiritual discipline to maintain our amen your focus and your path amen to us the place called the promise thank you so much sister priscilla i also see you joining amen thank you so very much As we proceed towards the days of the end, we have to rehearse our, you know, our our faith and our walk with God, amen. And to keep that rehearsal, we have to practice. We have to practice, amen. The, the concept of you know uh, of abstinence, of you know of you know buffeting our flesh. Because why do we need to buffet our flesh to keep our spirit intact, to keep our mind, amen, on what matters? To keep our focus, amen, on what matters, amen. You know, the flesh is forever crying, you know. I want to be indulged, more food, you know, more drink, you know, whatever. You want, the, the flesh is never satisfied. Man is not, you know, the, 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 we've got to remind ourselves that our body has not been redeemed yet. We can say we are saved, our spirit is saved, yes. Our soul, amen, is, is being saved. That's part of what we're doing. That in fact, if 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 I may be bold to say where we are right now in our journey, amen, is is a reflection. It captures, amen, the concept of the redemption of the soul. The soul is not the, the salvation of the soul does not happen, you know, once. Like you know, you confess Jesus Christ, you know, to become your Lord and Savior. Jesus come into my life today. I accept you. Yes, if you die at this very moment that you confess, you go to heaven. Amen. But if you are not going to heaven, amen, you need to engage what is called the redemption of the soul. Amen. That is what is called the process of sanctification. 
and to 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 understand that to 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 live within the ambience of you know sanctification remember it was jesus who prayed all right he said he said father sanctify them by your word for your word is true he said that we may be washed by the washing of the water amen through the word those are process of sanctification amen we are saved we are being saved amen there's a process of you know a continual redemption and that redemption amen are the are the are the, are the concept of the transformation of our faculty because today you think that you're strong, you're, you're so powerful, all right? Uh, you pray storm down, you pray heaven down. Guess what? Tomorrow, if you don't maintain amen, a, a, a greater sense of, you know, walk with God, guess what? The, 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 the rebellious soul is going to stick his head out, amen, and will be demanding that you bow the knees. Our soul is very unruly. It's very, very unruly. It's so easy for the soul. Listen, the soul does not mind how powerful you were. You were spir spiritually yesterday. All right? You moved mountain. You walked on water. You cast out demon. You did all of that. Well, if, if you are not maintaining a walk with God today, your soul is going to amen, lure you to the other side. Yes. You have to maintain a consistency, a constancy, amen, of, of, of spiritual discipline. And that takes, amen, the understanding of the transformation, amen, of, of our faculty. You see, Paul said, you know, I die daily. I'm, I'm still on Romans 12. I die daily. This is a good place to, you know, to start. You know, we can go into all of, yes, we're, we're fasting to get this. We're fasting to get that. No, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's what we're dealing with. I was sharing with Tina, was it yesterday or thereabout, that when the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, what does that mean? The kingdom of God is not some tangible thing that, you know, you know we, we, we're seeking for. You know, the kingdom of God are spiritual values. Amen. They are the, they are the, they are the, they are the you know, if you will, the, 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 the culture that defines our identity, our spiritual identity, the kingdom of God, even though spiritual things are, are substantial, of course. Now, Bible says, now faith is the substance of things we offer, the evidence of the things we do not see. Yes, there's a substance to, to faith, to spiritual things. But this this substance are not things that we can, you know, we can grapple with in the, in our kind of human sense you have to be in the spirit amen to understand the ways of the spirit to understand the the the, the, the directions of the spirit to understand the, the the principles of the spirit you know we 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 like to limit amen our, our spiritual things to how we look at things in the natural realm like when you say darkness is covering the earth and gross darkness the people all right immediately when we say darkness is covering the earth, what comes to mind is well is dark all right. Uh, now it's uh, you know we're in a season where you know the the, the, the night gets you know uh, uh, dark easily. So you go out, you begin to oh it's dark out there. Well, but that's not the kind of darkness the Bible is talking about. The darkness Bible is talking about, amen. Is is a value? Is a system? Is a condition of life? All right. Is is evil? Amen. You know, ruling the life of men. Amen. Is wickedness. Amen. You know, taking dominion over human space. Amen. Is all kinds of values and law and policy that is being promoted. Amen. Against the truth. That's darkness. Darkness is not the shade of the, the, the evening or night. Darkness is has nothing to do with the you know with the with 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 the, with the time span. No. That's nothing to do with midnight. Right? Midnight, as you know in the scripture, amen, speaks of you know a period of, of, of challenge, of difficulty, amen, of of you know of, of of persecution, of if you will. All right. So when we talk about darkness, we're talking about amen, you know, a, a coming of powerful demonic activity that seeks amen to, to cause us to do things that contradicts the standards of God. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that we, as we look at this concept again, all right, that as we fast, we will, we will present ourselves to God because that's what I've been explaining. Presenting yourself to God as a living sacrifice. 
Lord, this is challenging. This is difficult. But because this is what you desire, this is what you, this is what you want, this is what you have laid down. Amen. I am, I am involving myself in it. You see, we're not just fasting for some material things. Yes, we do need the material things. Who doesn't need money? But we don't go out of our way to begin to fast to get money. Amen. Who doesn't need a wife or husband? Amen. Who doesn't need a new job or promotion? Amen. In their workplace. Who doesn't need, amen, you know, some upgrade? You know, we all need all of that. As long as we're humans, we need that. I need that. All right? Unless somebody says, well, this guy is not. No, no, no. I do need all of that. I need money to finish, you know, my project here. I need all but guess what those are secondary when we seek when we seek the kingdom of god as the scripture says amen then god finds a people that amen he can he can commit things into their hands he can commit amen wealth into their hands amen and and and, and these are things that i believe that the bible says it is the, it is the good pleasure it is the good you know pleasure of the father to give us all things to give us all things he knows your need more than amen you you think he know in fact he cares more about your need than you will care for your need a million years he's just afraid that if he gives you that thing that he may lose you and I have, i've heard somebody say well let him try me first oh he's tried so many and he knows you more than you know yourself. He knows that you are going to you are going to goof. You're going to make a mistake. So he rather with all those things from someone said, "Oh, if God let, let him give me that money first, let him try." No, 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 no. He's your father. He's he's the definition of wisdom. He's seen the he's seen the future, the end before the beginning. He knows your tomorrow. He knows what you're going to do. You know, certain things God does in our life to, pre to prevent us, amen, from, from making terrible mistakes. Certain things God refuses to give to us, amen, until we come of age. The Bible says that as long as the child is still under tutors, amen, is no better than a slave. Even though, amen, he owns the estate. Even though, amen, he is, in, he is going to be the next king. But for now, there are things he needs to learn. learn. There are things she needs to know, amen. So somebody says, but don't God care that I go through all of this thing? In fact, it's because he cared that he, 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 he withholds us things. Because if, if, if God has to respond to us the way we think, ah, By now, the world will have been something else. And of course, I'm talking about you know, in, in, a, in a negative form. So let's thank God. He said, all of this has to do with trust. And I'm speaking from, you know, from a position of you know, uh, uh, my own you know, work with him. So I, this is not just because, oh, I, I read this in, in some book or somebody preached about it or I, you know, no, no, no. This is how God has dealt with me. And I know it is the way he deals with particularly those he loves, those he has a plan for. If God has a plan for your life, my word is not going to leave you the way you are. You know, you, you may, you, listen, I've, of course, I'm sure you know this. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. Amen. Fasting does not change our situation. Fasting changes us and God enables us to change our situation. We cannot fast to change our situation, but we can fast to have insight, to have a better understanding, to have better clarity, to have a better understanding of God's intention and plan. Listen, the scripture already told us, listen to this. There is no fasting that we can fast, amen, that can, you know, uh, um, override what the scripture says. You can't fast yourself out of what God has already written. There is no spirituality that is that is that is that is more noble, that is more powerful, amen, than what has been written. So if the scripture says in Jeremiah, amen, for I know the plans, amen, that I have towards you. I know the thoughts and the plans that I have towards you, amen. Plans of good, amen, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. Now you were not, you didn't need to fast for God to say that. <laughs> 
We, we didn't need to bribe God. We didn't need to do some gym, spiritual gymnastic, amen, for God's amen, uh, plans and will, amen, uh, uh, his good plans and will to be established in our life, amen. No, when we fast, we fast to, you know, align ourselves, come on. We fast to align ourselves to heaven's plan, heaven's desire. Because we, as long as we live life and we're not walking circumspectly, we're not walking in, in the direction that God has ordained for us, there's every tendency, amen, that we can be derailed from the will of God, from the plan of God, amen, while looking for some breakthrough, while looking for some God knows what, amen. We, you know, we, we, we use our own hand to lead ourselves, amen, to the trap of the enemy. So it's important that we understand, amen, that God's plan for us are good plans. And if we miss that plan, amen, he will lead us through whatever he, he, he needs to lead us through, amen, so, to still bring us to his good plan. All right? God doesn't have a bad plan for anyone. No, 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 no. You know, God does not have an evil plan for anyone. God has not ordained anyone. Listen to this. To you know, to you know, to face some situation in life that brings them, you know, destruction and damnation. No. Or else the whole essence of Christ dying on the cross would have been in vain. Christ died, amen. For all, he said, listen to this. The Bible says, For all have sinned, amen, and have fallen short of the glory of God. Christ died for all human beings. Regardless of where they come from, who they are, amen. Regardless of our prejudice, amen. Christ died for, you know, the whites, the black, the yellow. He died for, amen. People living in Afghanistan, he died for people, amen. Living in Syria, living in Iran, living in Iraq, he died for the Arab world. He died for, amen. People living in Russia, he died for Africa. So, amen. He died for Europeans, amen. Regardless of how you think or feel about people, Christ, amen, loved all every one of us equally and that's why he died for everyone he doesn't have favorites our relationship with god amen is determined by how close we are by our own proximity so you see times like this when we fast we fast to get closer to him we fast to know his heart to know his mind to know his desire for us like i said all right? Our fasting does not just, you know, uh, automatically change our situation. All right? You know, people say we're fasting so that something can happen. Whatever is going to happen must first happen within, amen, our spiritual psyche, within our thought pattern, within our life, amen. Our fasting must awaken us to return back to him. The prodigal son, Bible said, came to his senses. He said, I will rise and I will go back to my father and I will say to him, Father, you see, that's that's a beauty, amen, of being awakened into a true state of life. That's what fasting does. It brings us into a new reality of, amen, our identity, our place, our position, amen. For all I've seen are falling short of the glory of God, amen. As we seek the Lord, we are awakened to a new life, amen. Suddenly, we begin to realize, wait a minute, I've been naked all this while. No, I need to be, I need to be reclothed. I need to be clothed. You run to him. You run to him and he clothes you. He clothes you. He clothes you. Amen. You are waking to your truth, to your truth, you know, sense of existence. So God, I need you. Yes, that's what fasting does. God, I need you in my life. So if we are fasting just, amen, to get something, then it means that we do not know, amen, the essence of why we exist as believers, as Christians particularly, why we exist, amen, as followers of Christ. Because you don't need to fast for God to give you, amen, things. But you need to fast to know him better. You need to fast to awaken your sense of spirituality. You need to fast. Amen. Listen, when the scripture says this ones can this this ones cannot be dealt with except by prayer and fasting. Basically, what that fast is doing is, is, is what Jesus is saying in that context is you, the, the, the kind of spiritual life and power that you need, amen, to command this kind of demonic attack, amen. You don't have it. So fasting takes you fasting does not give you power fasting only leads you amen to the one amen who who, who owns all power hallelujah this one cannot go except by prayer and fast you see the the, the philosophy that we have been teaching for a while has helped a lot of christians amen to read to redefine their life 
to look and re-examine their life. That's why some people, when they listen to me, they're like, this guy, you're, you're not talking what, you know, I'm, I'm used to. Of course, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm saying the thing that you're used to, then, then you don't need to listen to me. I'm bringing, amen, a perspective that is godly, that is kingdom-minded, amen, that is God's intention, God's plan, amen, is to unite us back to him. All right? God's plan is not just to take us to heaven, amen, to a street of gold. No, his plan is to unite us, amen. Wherever God is, that's heaven. I'm not saying there's no place called heaven, but I'm saying, amen, what makes heaven heaven is because God is there. <laughs> If God decides tomorrow to shift to hell, then have, hell will become heaven. You get the point? Wherever God is, amen, is heaven. If, if God comes down, amen, to earth, hallelujah, earth becomes heaven. And that's why he says that we should pray. His kingdom come, his will be done on earth. When God's kingdom, amen, comes to our to our life into our space in, you know into our into our environment that place gets to be transformed the children of israel made that mistake they thought amen bringing the ark of god amen into amen their their their, their battle amen suddenly will will, will 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 change amen the battle plan you know and give them victory oh they were wrong and that's what religion does. Okay, if I can just do this, if I can just fast, if I can just, you know, uh, no, no, no. It's not the act. It is the spirit behind the act. All right. All right. You can be, you can be doing things that seem to involve, you know, an activity of spirituality, but you are totally disconnected. Amen. From what brings the presence of God down. Amen. You can, you can get yourself, you know, uh, involved in an activity that does not allow the presence of God, amen, to resident or to preside, then it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time, amen. The presence of God is what we are seeking for, is what we want. When the presence of God is, is known within our life, within our space, that place gets to be transformed, all right? It's like, it's like rejoicing, amen, because you are in Bethel, but El Bethel himself is not there. That's that's the that's 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 the issue of religion. Religion celebrates events. Religion celebrates, or uh, you know, uh, 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 things like this. You f with fasting. And like I said, you know, uh, was it last week when I was trying to prepare us? You know, you hear some, you know, tradition. Some church they'll tell us, well, "No, we're going forty days. We're going, you know, uh, sixty days. We're going hundred days." I say, "You guys have done more than Jesus." So they think, amen, the, the, the activity is what defines their spirituality. No, it's our obedience to the voice of God, to the heart of God, to the mind of God, is what God wants to achieve through, amen, that thing that we're doing, amen, that makes it relevant. Or else our activity, no matter how sanctimonious, how pious, amen, how, how spiritual they may look, amen, they're still religion. Religion, amen, is the definition of man about what God says. Religion is how man interprets the things of God. Let me conclude this scripture. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and, and pleasing unto God. This is your true and, and proper worship. It says, then do not be confused to this world. I've spoken so much about that. Do not be conformed. Don't yield yourself. That takes, amen, some spiritual uh, 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 determination. Amen. Not to be conformed. When everything in you is crying, I want to be also be part of it. I want to be part of the trend. Remember, the ways of this world are, to the natural eyes are not evil. Don't be conformed. Listen, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world. The pattern of this world to the natural mind, to the carnal mind, amen, are good. They are good. It takes the eyes of the spirit to see, amen, the, 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 the evil within the activities of men. It takes, amen, the awakened spirit. It takes the prophetic, you know, a, 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 a eyes of God, you know, in, in us to see, to see the world, amen, for his true state, for his true condition. If you're not spiritual, you will never, and I mean to, you know, 
you know, contextualize what I mean. Saying being spiritual means to be full of the Spirit of God, amen, and to live a life that is totally yielded in obedience to the to the voice of God. If you're not living in that order, you will never be able to see, amen, the world in its true state. In fact, you will promote, you will appreciate, you will celebrate. There are things that the world celebrates that Christians also have been have joined them. Yes, when is Christmas? And everybody joy. Oh, it's Christmas! Hallelujah! Jolly, jolly. We, we, <laughs> you know, it's Christmas. But the world knows amen, their idea of Christmas. They're not celebrating the birth, amen, of you know, of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. No. For every, you know, uh, 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 you know, a uh, uh, song, ca carol song they sing, amen, is for the promotion of, of, of commerce. Everything in the world, amen, to the world, amen, is about making money. The God, the Bible talk about the God of this world being known as what? Mamo. Mamo is the God of this world. So if we want to live our life within the context of the ways of this world, we will bow to that same spirit of mamo. So don't be conformed, amen, to this world, but rather be transformed. To be transformed means to have, amen, a, you know, a, a, a different way of life, a different philosophy, a different concept of thinking and reasoning, amen. But be, 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 be transformed. You have to be in the world, amen, to reject, amen, the principles that they prefer, they pref they, they, they prefer and they're, they're providing for their followers. Don't be conformed to this world, but rather be transformed. Don't be conformed to their values. Don't be conformed to their desires, to their patterns of life. If, if, if you are born into the system of this world, like I was born into it, then you've got to know that that is a lot of work to, you know, to, you know, to, 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 to do. We can all sing all the Christian song, do all the Christian things that we do, you know. But if our passion is still gravitating towards the ways of this world, towards the system of this world, guess what? We will be conformed. <laughs> we will be conformed. We will be conformed. And we will subscribe, amen, to the passions and to the desires of this world. And that itself is what leads us into sin. So I'm explaining this just to, you know, give us, you know, if you will, a foundation that will allow us to 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 engage the, the the days ahead of us in fast i like the confession we made this morning beautiful excellent confession we 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 want to live our life amen in 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 in, in that order of life that you know that is sanctified that that is that is holy Holy is not just about being sanctimonious. Holiness is being whole. It's living a life that is complete. That seek, amen, to honor God in everything. That seeks to please God, amen, in every, in every way. As I round up to that, we're going to pray and then we're going to also make some declaration, which I think is, is good, amen. I believe this is good for us. Yes. Sometimes you need to make this declaration to realign your mind, to realign your thought, amen, to bring yourself to divine compliance, to surrender yourself, to surrender your will, to surrender your emotion. Yes, those aspects of our life that want to have, amen, the, you know, the better of us, we, we yield them to God. We yield them to God. By doing so, guess what? We open up ourselves to a dimension where the things of God can flow into our life. All right? Yes, they say, Daniel, since the first day you begin to seek to understand and pray, we've dispatched, amen, your answer. But guess what? <laughs> There's a resistance. Yeah, there are things God wants to do in our life, all right, that are being resisted by the principality, by the forces of darkness, by demonic spirit, amen, that have been assigned over the realms. 
that we live. That's why we have to rise up as a governmental people, amen, and not allow the enemy to pin us down, to keep us in some God knows where, some hole somewhere, amen. No, we have to rise up and take our place in the in the place of prayer, amen, and begin to declare who we are, amen, who, who we are and whose we are, amen. The more you do this with the understanding, amen, that, that the one who lives in you is greater than the one, than, than the one in the world, guess what? Your spirit begins to develop power and grace and ascendance, amen, over every satanic and demonic activity that may want to limit or stop, amen, the intentions of God in your life. Because indeed, if you allow them, the, the enemy will. The enemy way. I mean, if they if they try to stop, you know, the prayer of Daniel. I mean, who are we? So I'm 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 saying all of this, amen, just to lay a solid foundation for us as we proceed further, as we march further, amen, as we go on with God, amen, as we seek spiritual breakthrough. Indeed, we are seeking, we are believing God for breakthrough breakthrough spiritually spiritual breakthrough when we have breakthrough spiritually amen we break through in other areas of our life amen if you're seeking to break through in one aspect of your life amen that is not amen in sync with god's eternal prophetic purpose for your life all right listen to these you may find yourself in trouble because uh, uh, you may have this thing today you may have whatever you are in, in, in need of or you're searching for but your life is not you know in sync with what sound spirituality is the enemy can come tomorrow and take that thing from you we don't want that we want to stand we want to have a man clarity let me finish this scripture <laughs> i keep saying i need to finish it says don't be conformed to this to you know don't don't, don't be conformed to, to to the pattern of this world but rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind it says then you will be able to test i like that scripture then you will be able then your spirit will be so powerful will be so sound will be so enriched so skilled to test just look at amen, what you will save by being able to test. You will be able to test and approve. It's not just to be able to test something, all right, but you'll be able to approve. I mean, that is the heart of the prophetic itself. You'll be able to test and approve. Just imagine how productive your life is and mine will be if we get to this realm where we're able to test you know people walk into your space you can test their spiritual state amen and you can approve or disapprove their condition without them even saying anything amen and if they are speaking you can still pick if they are genuine or they are just you know lying or just blabbing yes this is the quality of the spirit that is needed in our day in a day where people can lie to your face, can pretend, can, you know, say all kinds of things that look so nice and, and wonderful. Meanwhile, they mean something else. You'll be able to, amen, test and approve what, amen, what is God's will. Or what God will, what God's will is. You're able to test and approve the will of God. You'll be able to know that which is good, what is, you know, pleasing and what is perfect? This is the place I want to be, friends. I don't know about you. I want to be in that place that I can look at things and I'm not deceived. You know, like Joshua. You've, you've heard me use that scripture several times. Amen. The Gibeonite came. The Bible says, and they sampled the, the, the things they brought and never inquired of the Lord. They didn't have the capacity, amen, to test and to approve. If indeed what the Gibeonites are saying, amen. Is true or false? How many of us, amen, are, are in that condition, that state of, of spiritual quality that when people speak to us, that we are able to test, that we are able to approve, amen, their, 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 their spiritual life, amen, if indeed what they're saying is of God or something else. Come on. We want to be in that state. That is what we need in days ahead of us, amen, as we engage in situations where we need to make decisions, 
we want to be amen be able to test and approve that which is godly or ungodly we we, we don't want to be lied to we don't want to be forced into things or compromise no we want to you see where your spirit is able to say yes that is green go you go your spirit says no 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 you need to wait this is yellow wait first or your spirit is flashing red you stay away lord we want to thank you tonight your grace is more than sufficient for us lord this is the first night first day of this fast we thank you for granting us grace strength to wait upon you thank you lord that you are able oh god yes to lead us further there are things we want to know we want to discover there are things we want to enter there are realms we want to uncover places dimension oh god that are locked within our spirit man that we want to open up in this period of fast things we want to be able to hear with clarity so that our decision oh god are not foggy so help us father Enable us, O oh God. Grant us, O oh God, the grace as people that are seeking. You said if we will seek you diligently with all, all of our hearts, we will find you. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you will enable us. You will grant us, O oh God, grace, grace, grace to seek you diligently. Not to be distracted in our search. We want to be like that woman who lost, yes, a, a coin, oh God. Who searched the entire house to find that piece of coin. Father, we pray, oh God, that in this day where men are searching for all kinds of things outside of your will, we want to focus, yes, our minds, our hearts, on the richness, on the treasures of your kingdom. Oh, friends, there are, there are things that we are yet to uncover in, in, the, in the realm of God. There are dimensions waiting for us to uncover in God. Friends, I pray that our heart will be set on a journey in this season, in this period, as we wait on God, that there will be a cry in us to go deeper, 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 that the deep will call to the deep. The shallow can never call to the deep. But that we will search, we will long for, we will seek for. Not something superficial. We are, we are tired of super, superficiality. Come on friends. We are tired of superficiality. We are tired of make believe. We are tired of you know, some lies, some you know, you know, satanic you know, deception. We want the real thing. We want the McCoy. They said if you're looking for treasure, you want to dig deep. You don't find treasure on the surface of the ground. You want to mine. You want to go deep. You want to search. The deep calls to the deep. We want, yes, the depth that heaven has deposited in us to begin to cry out and reach out to the depth of God. Yes. That in the day when God comes into our garden looking for Adam, that we will not go into hiding. No. It's a brand new day. In this new day. We open oh God. A new chapter of quest. We open we open ourselves to a new chapter of spiritual quest. Yes. Those who seek him diligently with all their heart will find him. Lord I want to find you. Lord deliver us from the sin of assumption. Deliver us from presumption. The, 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 the lie of believing that we know, the lie of accepting that we, we, we know God, we know his ways, we know there are, there are realms, dimensions that all the men and women that have walked past, that have transversed the earth, have not discovered in God. Yes. There are realities that they have not touched. You put all the men that have walked this earth, there are dimensions in God that they are yet to touch. They, they, lived, they live their life in certain position of power, influence, but there are things, the Bible says, it is 
the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the glory of nobles, noble men, noble men, noble women, yes. Nobility is what is required of, of us in this new day. Nobility is the ability to search deep, to, to go, to, to, to look for, to search for ah, the things that wisdom cherish, the things that wisdom has kept close to our hearts. Let's move away, super, move away from superficiality. Let's move away from third hand information. What men say, what men, you know, we, our spirituality cannot be benchmarked by the minds of men. It's time to move away, to shift away. You, you can't, listen, you cannot, you cannot have more of God than you quest for him. When Jesus collided with that woman at the, at the well, <laughs> you see, her ideology, her position almost hinder her from being changed and transformed to heaven's prophetic intentions for her life. Thank God for the mercy of God. This is what we need in this season, friends. We need amen, that same experience that Jesus, yes, had with that Shunammite woman, with that uh, 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 Samaritan woman. Yes. He said, give me to drink. <laughs> he said, give me to drink. He said, but you don't have anything to fetch from this well. Jesus said, this well you're talking about, if you drink from this one, you'll be thirsty again. You will be thirsty again. <laughs> oh come on I'm sure you know what I'm talking about all kinds of well that we're drinking from that we thought will this one will quench my thirst alas the thirst is still there it was our Lord Jesus who stood on that great day he said is there anyone thirsty let him come let him come drink of me he said, come buy of me bread without money. Come drink of me. Come on, friends. Lord, we, we see how we need you in a day where men are discarding, in a day where men are living in pretense, in a day where men seem to be satisfied by something, something, some experience. No, beyond an experience, we need you. Beyond the miracle, we need you. Beyond signs and wonder, we need you. Beyond breakthrough, we need you. <laughs> beyond money, we need you. Beyond fame, we need you. Beyond power, we need you. We need you in our lives. And this is one of the reasons why we are fasting. So we can have a new experience of you. So we can be awakened to a new reality of who you are. Who you are. Open the veil. Reveal yourself to us. <laughs> we are searching. We need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you more than my daily food. I need you more than my daily bread. I need you more than anything in life. More than anything in life. There is nothing, I have come to discover that there is nothing in this world or outside of this world. There is nothing in heaven that can satisfy or, or on earth that can satisfy than you. You are the image of the satisfaction of man. So we need you. Help us to God. Help us. Not to stop questing. Not to stop searching. Give us an unsatiable hunger. Give us, oh God, an unsatiable hunger for you. Bring us to the place where we're never satisfied with who you are to us. Deliver us, oh God, from self-satisfaction self-worship take us beyond the minds of men 
Take us beyond religion and traditions of men. We need you more than just some revelation that we preach. We need you more than something that we teach. We need to have an experience that we cannot explain. But gives us a foundation, a stability to remain, to abide in days where the foundations of the nations have been eroded. Oh, may your kingdom come, Lord. May your will be done in our lives. Have your way. As we go to bed tonight, oh God, open the heavens. Invade our room. Invade our space. Take us on a journey. Reveal your heart to us. Reveal your will and ways to us. Provide for us all that we need so we can live a life that is holy, that is complete, that is godly. You said you've given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. We thank you, Father. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for my brethren tonight. Thank you for everyone that has made it, that has joined us, and those that will be listening to this broadcast later on, I pray for them, every one of them. Awaken their spirit, man. Energize them. Awaken their inner man. Empower them. Awaken their faculty, O oh God. Shake them up, O oh God. Align them, O oh God, yes, to that straight and narrow path. Bring them to the place, Almighty, where they can drink again from you, the brook of life. Christ, you are our fountain. May we never be satisfied by just drinking once. May we daily long for this living water. Oh, glory to Jesus. I pray for them. Nourish them. Flourish their life with, with, with your presence. Pour out your spirit upon us. He said in the last day you pour out your spirit upon our flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Thank you Lord Jesus. For these are days of the outpouring of your spirit. That we may speak forth. Yes, your heart, your mind, your desire, your counsel. It's called prophecy. Thank you Jesus. For dreams, yes, that you are beginning to share with all the men, we bless you, O oh God. That every one of us will take our rightful place. That we will not be distracted. We bind our mind, soul, and body to you. Thank you, Lord, once again that we are renewed. The weights, the weight of sin, the weight of the flesh, the weight of sorrow and pain and regret, we lay them aside. We cast them off, O oh God. The weight, O oh God, yes, of sorrow, we lay them aside. We, this day, oh God, embrace, yes, lightness. We travel light. We come to the place of your good pleasure. Thank you. Awaken our minds, oh God. May we be informed again as you transform us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we honor you. We glorify your name. You are worthy of praise. Have your way. Take your place and be glorified. Ruler of the nations, come, take your place. King of glory, take your place. We celebrate you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Mighty God, thank you, Lord, for healing that is taking place. Yes, in the minds of your people. Healing, yes, within their faculty. Thank you for restoration. Thank you, Father, for renewal. Thank you, Father, for new beginning. Thank you, Father, for deliverance. Thank you, Father, for what your spirit is doing right now. In the name of Jesus, in the life of your people. Yes, I prophesy into your life, into your space tonight. That the Lord reaches you where you are. Be healed, be restored, be renewed, be reformed, be revived. In the name of Jesus, be transformed, be redeemed. Let that which has been lost... Yes, be found in Jesus' name. 
Let your life bring pleasure and glory to God. Let everything that God has ordained for you in the name of Jesus become a true reality. Yes, openings of doors unto you. Father, I thank you that you make a way for your people. As we wait on you tomorrow, we thank you, Father, for new strength. We thank you, Father, for new vision, new direction. Thank you for inspiration, revelation. Thank you, Lord, that you will illuminate us, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for depth that you're going to bring us into. Thank you, Father, for new ways of doing things. Thank you, Lord, that our strength, yes, will be renewed. We bless your name. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Well, thank you, everyone, tonight once again. I really appreciate this time of uh, uh, just sharing the word and sharing amen, the, 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 the heart of God with you. I want to believe the Lord that somehow we all amen have been edified tonight amen thank you so very much thank you uh, uh sister uh, um sister kumisa thank you my dear sister priscilla thank you god bless you i see somebody else I can't see the name. Okay, I see. Okay, Brad Daniel, thank you so very much. Again, God bless you. Really appreciate it. And every other person out there that uh, uh, may have connected with us, but uh, uh, I can't see your chat, all right? But I really do appreciate it. And those that will be listening, particularly those that will be listening on online, uh, uh, excuse me, on our audio platform, every one of you, may God's blessing continue to amen, increase in your life. May you continue to journey towards the place amen, of your prophetic assignment. May heaven perfect amen, his intention in your life. Continue to pray tomorrow. Amen. We will start again by 6 o'clock. I believe uh, tomorrow we'll start early by 5, maybe 5 minutes to 6 we'll start. So uh, continue to fast. We are fasting. We're waiting on God. Like I said, we're not just doing this for ourselves. We're also doing it for posterity. We're doing it for our children, our children's children. We're doing it for our nation. We're doing it, amen, for the body of Christ. We're doing it for a change, amen, in our governance, in leadership, amen. We're doing it to the glory of God. So thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. Have yourself a wonderful night rest, all right? Eat something, don't eat too much, you know, heavy stuff. And remember, we're still fasting, so just take it easy. We believe God, amen, that by the 14th, we'll have a major breakthrough. God bless you. Enjoy your evening. <laughs>